originally, Africans did not define themselves by continent, but more by region. Africa as a continent began to be defined by foreigners. In North Africa, the Romans had a province called Afrique. The word became Africa. The history, both known and hidden, of the land where time began has been a primary focus of Dr. Clark's scholarship throughout his long career. The concept of social order, the concept of an organized society came out of Nile Valley civilization. Before there was any other society that has been known to man functioning any other place in the world. The significance of Nile Valley civilization is that it was that civilization that set a standard of performance untouched by the other civilizations of the world. And people are reluctant to give an African credit for a creation that happened in Africa. They also forget that the Nile Valley stretches 4,000 miles into the physical body of Africa, and that it was the world's first cultural highway. For centuries, Eurocentric scholars had rejected the idea that the mighty Egyptian empire was in fact created and maintained by black Africans. The concept that Western civilization was the product of non-white intelligence, imagination, technology, and spirituality was unacceptable, both psychologically and politically. A brilliant Senegalese scholar and scientist would shake and many say topple the very foundation of that conventional wisdom. His name was Sheikh Anta Diop. His research was brought to the attention of the English-speaking world through the efforts of his longtime colleague and friend. I was wondering why his books had never been published uh, in the United States, he said, there's no publisher's interest in his books. And so it took me seven years to interest the publisher in the books of Sheikh Atta Diop. Diop's disciples refer to him as the Pharaoh of the Upper Nile. You must be strong enough and serene enough de voir les faits historiques to see the historical facts et de les interpréter and to in interpret them. Uh, nous pouvons tous être passionnés. We can all be impassioned. Mais ce n'est pas de cette manière que nous résoudrons les problèmes complexes de l'humanité. But that is now how, not how we will resolve the very complex Donc, problems of humanity. Donc cette domination dont nous souffrons, dont j'ai souffert moi-même. The domination that we suffer from, that I have suffered from myself. Notre propre domination des autres races l'a précédé. Our domination of other races preceded it. Donc l'Afrique a exercé un impérialisme continu pendant 4000 ans. For 4,000 years, black Africa had an imperialism. Occidental était conquise et était justement sous la domination noire. All of Western Asia was under the, domin under the domination of blacks. On n'aurait pu jamais penser à cette époque-là que la situation pourrait un jour être renversée. And at that time, <laughs> no one would ever have dreamt that the situation could be reversed. C'est pour ça que l'étude de l'histoire, l'étude de l'histoire, nous redonne la sérénité pour this apprécier is... les faits et les relativiser. This is why the study of history gives us the serenity required to appreciate the facts as they are. In 1974, he would challenge the major scholars of the world on the concept of Egypt not being anything other than an African state. In the conference on the peopling of Egypt, leading scholars of the world met and debated. Most of them wanted to put Egypt's origin outside of Africa. Sheikh Antetio and his protege, Theophile Obenga, placed Egypt within the context of Africa's totality. Sheikh Antetio was more than a historian. He was a scientist, he was a paleontologist, and he had proven that if he could get the pigment from some of the mummies, he could prove the African origins. All the rest of the conferees came just to disagree. And when it was all over, they had to admit these two men came prepared to prove their case. 
at that point, they began to close the door to the research of Sheikh and Tadio. From the first dynasty to the invasion of Nile Valley, that was the first golden age. And from the third dynasty came the great multi-genius, M. Hotel, the real father of medicine, who lived 1,800 years before the Greek who's called the father of medicine. And when we read the biography of the Greek, he says, I am a child of M. Hotel. And from the 18th dynasty came the world's great social reformer and maybe one of the world's first deities, Akhenaten. He thought so much of life, he would not crush a flower. He outlawed warfare. Spirituality was a part of the total life of the people. Before the coming of the Europeans, the African was very religious. The Step Pyramid was originally built with the temple at the top where you can go up and pray. This relates not just to the glorification of a pharaoh, but the spiritual outpouring of a people. This is what made the civilization of the Nile so great. At the same time that Egypt was in its 24th dynasty, Europe was just emerging from its preliterate past. The first show of European intelligence was a book called The Artists in the Iliad. That's about 850 B.C. Where is Egypt, 850 B.C.? Egypt is old and tired and has gone through 24 dynasties. It is on the eve of its last great dynasty that will come from the pharaohs in the south. And the European has just written a book of folklore. <laughs> just south of Egypt lies another highly evolved black society, the Nubians. Their civilization thrived for some 3,000 years. I call the 25th dynasty the one dynasty from the south that moved up north and to tell their cousins, the Egyptians, how to rule a nation one more time. In the great show of history, this was Africa's last walk in the sun. It was a great and mighty walk. That walk had lasted 10,000 years. Now it's coming to an end. Europe is just being born. The very word Europe is not even being used. 